This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. DJ Future! That DJ... Kiss my mama goodbye. Going back to the island, I say the no word. My mama Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Monday, Monday, July 4th, and it's a little after 11 a.m. in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for today as we have a conversation from someone from Grand Bahama. I have my special guest today as we do the countdown to independence. Uh, my special guest today is one Shivago Bean, and he's from Grand Bahama, and he's going to have a conversation on what is happening in Grand Bahama, how he transitioned to New Providence, and with that conversation, I want to talk about independence. What are you doing for independence? What does independence mean to you? I want to know, how do Freeport people celebrate? I didn't know they even have an Independence Day park. So that was news to me. So um, I want to know. Uh, call, call me. Call me. And let's have a conversation. Are we independent? Do you think the Bahamas is independent enough? Or do you think we have I issues? I know that we are an interdependent country. And being independent means that we are sovereign and we can govern ourselves. But some people have some issues with it. They always question, when are we independent? I see in the last show, um, Aaron said, is the Bahamas a real place? But well, I'm here. And I'm definitely real. So it got to be a real place. But go have a, call me up. Let's have a conversation. As again, I speak to one Shivago Bean. So let me, without further ado, let me introduce him. Shivago, how are you doing today? Good morning, Niri. I'm fine, and you? I'm doing good, man. And thanks very much for agreeing to sit in with me, to be my guest host. I'm not going to call you a guest. I'm going to call you a guest host because I want to invite you back here again so we can have a series of conversations. And, and, and I want you to share your input on things, right? But before we go, get, go along, right, um, I know you as Shivago Bean, right? And the first time I saw you wrote your, write your name down, you spelled your name B-E-E-N. -B -B and I said, wait, that's a different type of bean. What, what kind of bean that is? Because I, I know the Andrus bean. I know the Auckland's bean. Uh, but your bean is different. Can you tell me where you get this B-E-E-N, uh, double E-N bean from? Good morning, everybody in Radio Line. I'm uh, so happy um, to be on the live radio talk show this morning with C.A. Nuri. Um, first of all, Nuri, um, this B-E-E-N, um, it's originated from Turks Island, which is where my father is from, Grand Turk. Um, back then, growing up in school, I always used to be teased about the B-E-E-N. I can imagine. This is where you're from. <laughs> yes, everybody be like, so 
excuse me, uh, where did you get this um, B-E-E-N from? And I was like, um, my father from Turks Island. And they'd be like, wow, that's a Turks Island title. They say yes. And they're like, well, that's the first time I ever saw it. So question came to my mind. I was like, okay, I got to ask Daddy about this title. Yes. You know, where this B-E-E-N originated from? Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to do some background search on it as well. So apparently I asked him and he was like, well, my father's from Bermuda. So your daddy's daddy is from Bermuda. Yes, sir. So you are from B Bermuda originally by way of Turks Island. Yes, sir. Okay. So, but how many beans are there in Turks Island, do you? Oh, like, well, Is it plenty or just like a handful? Well, when I went over in 2009 for a vacation visit and they got some background, family, yeah. you know, um, it was really a lot. Um, I went to Grand Turk. So it's Tur plenty beans. Plenty. So beans is a Turks Island name. <laughs> it's plenty beans in Turks Island. And I also find... A few of them here in Nassau as well. There's B E N B in here in Nassau. Right in Nassau. And you're the only one I ever come across. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's good, man. It's good. You have cousins all over the place, right? Yes, sir. So I, I know you mentioned Turks and Caicos, right? Mm -hmm. And we know, at least Bohemians know, are, are aware that Grand Bahama has a large Turks and Caicos descendant population. Yes, it does. Right? And is there any kind of celebratory or gathering or Turks Islanders uh, in Grand Bahama? Because I know you always hear about them, right? But I thought they, they, they mesh and assimilated into the Bahamas. But I want to know if there's a Turks Island presence, a Turks Island culture, you know, in Grand Bahama per se. Well, you know, Nuri, um, before I relocated to Nassau, I know um, several years ago, um, I think it was David Wallace, I know sometime... They normally have like this Turks and Caicos Island Heritage and Sea Grape, I think it is, mm -hmm. on the park, where all Turks Islanders gather, gather together. Everybody meet each other. Um, also, I know a lot of Turks Islanders attend like the Prophecy Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of them in Church of God of Prophecy, and a lot of them decide stand in Eight Mile Rock, such as Sea Grape, Pinedale, Jonestown, Holmes Rock. Just Turks Islanders. Just Turks Islanders. Yes. And, 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 and me being familiar with you, I know that uh, you were born and start, barely, like I say, beginning. You, you, your young hood was in H Mile Rock until you moved to where, you, where your family is now, the homestead is now. Oh, oh yes. Um, we grew up in Pinedale, Eight Mile Rock. Okay. And then um, in 19, between 1984 to 85, we located to Pine Ridge. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? I'm not familiar with Grand Bahama, even though I need to go. Right? What's the different uh, in terms of the uh, culture, in terms of the atmosphere and the environment between an Eight Mile Rock and a, and a Pine Dale? Well, Eight Mile Rock is more, it reminds me more of Nassau. Uh, M M Nassau proper, like East Street, uh, uh, Crooked e Island Street, yeah, Robinson Road, yes, or Nassau? It's, it's, it's very live. live. It's, a, it's a lot going on in Eight Mile Rock. And Freeport, where's, where's you got as the port. Mm -hmm. So, the government really runs Eight Mile Rock, and the port runs Freeport. Two two major cities. Two major cities, and in one island. And here it is that too. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna go down to Eight Mile Rock, they have this thing as bonded plate. So you will have to stop the Eight Mile Rock corner if you have a bonded plate on your car, and let someone. What, what pick do you, you mean up. by bonded plate? And what do you mean by stop? Is is a bonded plate? Um, we have like like. Like bonded vehicles would come in. Okay, I understand. Yeah, bonded vehicles. so the bonded vehicles only could go certain areas in Freeport. Mm -hmm. It cannot go in, in um, Smith's Point. It cannot go in Lewis Yard. It cannot go in Eight Mile Rock. You'll have to stop at these at these various. Just stop the car right there. Stop the car right there and let someone come and pick you up and take you through the area. Wow. It yes. sounds like you know, some kind of gated community there. Uh, that's kind of different. Yeah, but uh, interesting to know. And so you transitioned from Eight Mile Rock to Pinedale. Pinedale, how long have you been living there? No, I transitioned from Pinedale to Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, okay, yeah, thanks Pine for the correction. Ridge. Um, we've been living in Pine Ridge now from, from 1984 mm -hmm. till up to right now. So you're a Pine Ridge boy. Basically, but I'm still a Pinedale boy. You're still a Pinedale boy. That's, that's where my roots is from. I understand. The majority of my family lives in Pinedale. Mm -hmm. The beans, them. The beans, the Mizzix. Yeah, you're real tr Turk Island. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you Turk Island squared. Yes, my mother was a Mizzix before she got married. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. But uh, I, I know that you're, you had uh, matriculated, uh, uh, emigrated to New Providence before the big hurricane. Right? Yes, I did. And I know that your parents, your brothers and sisters, experienced 
the hurricane, and I know you were in communication with them during that. Um, how did you feel being in Nassau whilst that hurricane and you hearing the conversation, you hearing your mother call and telling you what's happening to them? And, and, this, and can you uh, basically recant what was being said whilst you were here in Nassau? Yes. All right, back to Hurricane Dorian. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, at that time, you know, I was making numerous calls, checking up on my family, just about like every hour, every minute, every second, just keep calling, calling. I was in communication with my mother and my brother mm -hmm. and also my father at that time. And I think I called the day before and I called the day of the hurricane. And I know my mommy told me the last time I spoke with my mother, she's like, um, the water, we could see the water from by the red light. So, so I say, mommy, y'all got to get out the house, mm -hmm. you know, try getting a shelter, call someone to just get out the house because it don't sound good. Mm -hmm. But, um, after I spoke with her, I spoke with my brother and he told me they was evacuating to get out the house. Where did they evacuate to? They evacuated to my niece's residence. And where was that? That was in South Bohemia. Okay. Yeah, South Bohemia area. So at that time, I lost communication with them like for probably about two to four days. How did you feel? Very worried. Mm -hmm. Very worried. So I was trying to like contact friends also to, hey, check up on my family, see what's going on, see if you can hear from any one of them because I need to know what's going on. As in me being the last child, everybody's over there, you know, so it was a lot on my mind, you know, it's, and it was just hard mm -hmm. because the house got damaged. What type of damage did the house have? Um, water, all the rock sheet, everything was old. I mean, it's just like completely destroyed inside. Um, I know you had flooding. How, how high was the flooding? The flooding, the flooding in the home is like a, probably 10 to 12 feet. 10 to 12 feet of water of water yeah inside your house yes, i mean basically everything everything was yeah, destroyed ev everything house. everything the furniture yes. everything was gone so did you have any roof damage um basically with the roof um we had they had some kind of roof damage but after that they got the metal roof put on it but it wasn't too too bad because the roof is more as a concrete roof yeah i heard that grandma yeah, had concrete, concrete roof type thing Right, which, which is peculiar for me because I can't see me imagine my roof being concrete, but I, but I heard that the number of houses there. Yeah, after. back back in the day, um, before we move in those low cost homes, um, they build the homes with the frames, mm -hmm. and then they pour the cement into the frames, so okay. nothing was like really basically really um carpentry work. It was more like concrete mostly. Okay. Building the, building and the did your parents, brother, sister describe the storm to to you, like what was happening? Yeah, at that time, I mean, they, they was like, you know, when I, when I was able to get in contact with them, you know, she, my mom, you know, she was like, oh, I was very frightened. You know, we thought the water was going to even come in my niece, but she said she thought the water was going to even come out at my niece's residence. Okay. Yeah, because where it was so, so, it was getting so flooded over there, mm -hmm. you know, so it had them kind of frightened. So you believe if your parents had stayed and not evacuated, what do you think would have happened? I think it would have been a different scenario. All together. All together. Because you're saying 10 feet of water coming inside the house. Yes. You know? Uh, are you living like in a gully type thing? Or this is, like, describe your area. Is this a low-lying area? Well, Freeport is a low-lying area on the whole, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. It is a low-lying area on the whole. And we're surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. um, but where we live, we live um, in the Pine Ridge area on Explorers Bay West. Um... It's, it's, it's more like a low-lying area, mm -hmm. especially like in the back of the yard. The water, the water just sells. But you, have, like, you, have you ever experienced a type of flooding like that before? Or this is like a, a unique, like something odd, an oddity? Well, I, I experienced a lot of it. Um, 2004, Hurricane Jane of Francis. I mean, I, the flooding? You had flooding like that before? Yeah, when I was, when I was um, employed at the airport. Uh -huh. Yeah, we experienced a lot of that wow. at that time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and... Um, well, as you were here in Nassau and you, and you start, we couldn't communicate with your parents and your, and your siblings, uh, and you saw the videos of the jet ski, right, and, and the, the, the raging waters. You saw people had been saved. You saw people inside their roofs 
right? And and you hear the rumor or the talks of people uh, drowning or people getting swept out to sea or missing. Uh, how is that not being able to communicate with your with your fa family? Yeah, my mind started to wonder. You know, it was it was it was it was heavy on my chest because even I had um I had a classmate who lost his life in a hurricane in Abaco. Mm -hmm. So all these things was like you know just playing with my mind and like had me thinking. You know, I hope it it don't get to this point because I couldn't get no communication with my family at that time. So it really had me worried. Yeah. And how long did it take before you get to, um, to talk to them, communicate? So, well, you're all good. From them about probably three to four days after the hurricane. Okay, that's not yeah. bad. And I know that eventually you had to go buy supplies for them. You went, went to the United States and, and, and brought stuff back. How was it coming into Grand Bahama? Well, well when, I, when I arrived at the harbor, because I, I flew in from Nassau on, on plane and I went to Freeport on the on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, as we drove, my friend came and picked me up, and as we drove, it's just, every just thing just looked deserted. Everything just opened up. Everything was just destroyed. I was looking at the homes in the community. And when I went by my parents, them home, and I, and I opened the door and I looked inside, I could have seen from in the front room straight down to the last bedroom. And I was like, wow. Hmm. But I must recommend my brother because he was really, he was there, like trying to like put everything back together, even though it was only him one at the time. Mm -hmm. He was like really trying his best. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I, I know you mentioned that you came in on the boat and you went to Grand Bahama even recently, right? How was the airport? Because I don't think you all have an airport anymore. I think they shut down the airport, right? So how is it getting into Grand Bahama now? Where, what is that process? Oh, the airport. Um, well, normally they have like like the car trailers over there. I know Western Air, Western Air Station in a trailer. Um, Bahamas Air Station on the hill at the old Holiday Holiday Auto building. So they'll have the the taxi union bus transition you over to. The ramp on the airport from there. So you from the from the building, you need to get shuttled to the plane itself. Yeah, for Bahamas Air, but Western Air Station, they station on the airport because the trailer is still there, the office trailer. But the other the, the other buildings, the domestic building, the international building, all of them are totally destroyed. So the basically the airport is no more, just the space is there. Yeah, so just just basically the space, and Western Air has a has a mechanical. Hang out there, a big hang out there. That was destroyed also, but I feel look like they didn't doing some renovations to it. to getting it back together. But the airport, I think Freeport needs a, a high class, a high class airport. Actually, our government has committed to that. Yeah. The idea of when. <laughs> you know, exactly. it might be a while, it'll be when. We I, really don't need one. Yeah, and I and I see that um we're looking for a, a international assistance or foreign direct uh, investor. Or who knows? I may even find someone here who's willing to invest in that and, and bring it back and manage it. So I'm kind of excited and hoping that it happens soon, uh, sooner than later. You know, yes. you, you get promised things, and then three, four, five years later, or right before the election, you see they start breaking ground. So I'm hoping that um, it's happened sooner than, than later. Right. Um, today we're talking to Shavago Bean, B E E N, um, from Grand Bahama, from. Pine Ridge, you said, right? Yes, sir. From Pine Ridge, uh, Grand Bahama. And we're talking independence today. Our next thing we're talking about how they celebrate in Grand Bahama. I want to know wh what else is happening to uh, Grand Bahama. Um, and, and, and just general questions is that. Um, the, the number to reach us are 323 uh, 6232, 325 4316, 325-4259, or you go as Texas at 4222- of uh, uh, 4796 as we go on this commercial break and uh, we'll be right back this is Guardian Radio in the morning this is C.A. Nuri and I'll join you on the other side we're not always able to see the storms in life approaching 
but we can take the necessary steps to be prepared to ensure the safety of ourselves, our loved ones, and our property. This hurricane season, trust J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers. We'll be here to help you get back on track in your time of need. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And welcome back. This is Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C.A. Nuri, and we're having a conversation about Grand Bahama and what needs to happen there is where we're going to be uh, headed towards next. We have Zhivago Bain with me, and who's a... a, a, a Born, dead, and well, born, bred, and dead type grand bohemian, right? <laughs> Who is now living in New Providence at this present time. And he's basically telling me what's on the ground in Grand Bahama after we get a history of him and his people and just a history of what happened during the storm, right? And I want to talk independence because this is supposed to be an Independence Day show, right? And I know that in terms of people who I know who, who purposely goes to Grand Bahama to experience independence, only one person knows who does that, and that'd be like Fred Mitchell, <laughs> right? And he always knows I'm going to Grand Bahama now to experience a, um, Independence Day uh, for that, right? And um, how is independence in Grand Bahama? What do you all do? I know we in the Bahamas, we in New Pacific, going to say the Bahamas, right? They call it Nassau, the Bahamas. We are New Providence. We know we have the, the junction rush, right? We have the tattoo, Right, uh, uh, we have the fireworks. Right, um, the, the the everything on Bay Street oriented. Um, but what do you all do in Grand Bahama to celebrate independence? You know, well, Nuri, um, I can remember growing up as a as a young boy, um, going to the independence celebration on the on the Princess Towers lawn. The Princess, that's a hotel, right? That's closed down. Yeah, that's the hotel which is closed down now from Hurricane James. So was Jim. that a private ceremony being, be, to be able to go on the so hotel property, or is that a, a, like a government sanctioned type thing? Or, or you just don't know? Well, well, on, on the whole, the hotel is a private property or whatever, but um, it was it was it's always open up to the public because it's okay. an independent celebration. But I can remember um, growing up as a child, we always would go assemble to the Princess. Palmer's Princess Lawn for the independence celebration, the tattoo and all these stuff and whatever like that. Um, later on down after the hurricane came and destroyed the Princess Hotel, they relocated it to the Independence Park. So you all have your own Independence Day back there? Yes, which is That's at nice. Walter Parker Primary School on Call Road. Mm -hmm. And we also have the Beat Retreat. That is be um, downtown, downtown Freeport. Mm -hmm. So that's one of our one of our celebrations we all also have as well. And we do have we we did have the John Canoe back in the day, you know. It it used to be in West End. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the day, independent John Canoe. And West End, is that the capital of Grand Bahama? Yes, it is. Oh, not Freeport. Not Freeport. At least, at least you know the difference. West End is the so capital. So you're true, 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 true <laughs> Grand Bahamian for true. Yes, West End is the capital. Because I'm some Grand Bahamians who say Freeport automatically, and then you got to educate nope. them. Freeport is not the capital. Yeah. West End yeah. is the capital. Good. I, West I, Grand Bahama is the capital. I, I heard that West End looked like Auckland on a rainy day. Rough. Well, I've never seen <laughs> Auckland before, but West End, West End is a is a nice is a nice is a nice good um cause it's a nice good area um especially for a Sunday drive. Uh -huh. Go up there, get your conch salad, uh -huh. your pickle conch, uh -huh. your pancake and, and and fish. Yeah, let's talk about that pancake <laughs> and fish. <laughs> Who's mix pancake with fish? That just don't make sense. Is it really is a good dish. You, you have to try it. Yeah, you have to try it. I Trust me. Who, I have a, someone who promised me some pancake and fish, right? But I, I'm not sure when I can get that. But uh, my point <laughs> is, who made that up? That just don't make sense. No pancake with pancake with sausages, uh, but 
decide to put fish with it? I mean, that's a dinner meal or that's a breakfast thing? I wouldn't say a, a, um, a, 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 a dinner meal. It's more like a snack. Okay, chicken in the bag type thing. Yeah, but it, it, it's that, 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 that is very popular in Freeport. Like, almost like a national it's, it's very, it's, Yeah, it's, it's, it is a national dish in Freeport. Pancake and fry fish. And, and is, it, is it one of them pancake or them fluffy pancakes? Homemade. Okay, the pancake. Yeah, We've homemade. Like the pancake. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's very awesome. And um, what's your favorite junk in the group? In Grand Bahama, I'm not, Grand I know Bar- you now. You Nassau centric. Oh, I mean, in Grand Bahama, well, the swingers. I used to rush with the swingers too, also. Okay. Yeah, when um, when they started John Kunu back in Bazaar, that's back in the day. Mm-hmm. But then they relocate John Kunu now to downtown. I'm noticing that everything is being re- relocated <laughs> in this in this story. This scenario, oh, it should be moved from here. Then yeah, from because um, like I tell you, with Hurricane Jane and Francis, mm-hmm. yeah, destroyed the Bazaar area. But not that that wasn't the reason why John Kunu was moved to downtown. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Okay, yeah. and um, your fish fry, why so scattered? I mean, you need to take a bus to move from one fish fry area to go to the next store. I just don't understand that. Um, um, with the fish fry, we have we have a fish fry. We have two fish fries. We have two two local fish fries. Um, Wednesday night, which is Smith Spring. Mm-hmm. That's more like wait, a wait, wait, fish fry. Is not like a Monday through Sunday thing. No, it's just two days two, out of the week. A two day fish fry. Yeah, Wednesday. Everybody will relocate up to Smith Spring. Hey, listen, go ahead. Yeah, everybody will relo- relocate up to Smith Spring for fish fry. And then on Thursday night, you have one in 8 Mile Rock. So one on Wednesday and you go to the next so one? one on Thursday. On Thursday. Yes, very nice. You're all different up, very up, up nice. north, man. You're all, you're all different and, up And I love both of them. Yeah. So both of them. I, love, I enjoy both of them whenever I go home. So it's a different culture, different feel? Uh, you know, well, you know, 8 Mile Rock is more... Like I say, it reminds me more of Nassau. Urban. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freeport, more of that different side. Yeah, just yeah. different. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, um, so what do you think Grand Bahama needs? I, I, I want to talk about the economy of Grand Bahama, mm-hmm. how it has changed from when you were growing up, from when, uh, when your father was in the, in the hotel and things was bustling and booming. Mm-hmm. It, I know there has been a, a decline. Yes, it is. Right? Yeah. I know that the economy is challenged, especially after Hurricane Jean, you know, and, and more so often uh, that uh, after Hurricane Dorian. Uh, what has changed in Grand Bahama? What have you seen? And uh, what do you recommend? But, 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 but I want to hear more about what's changed, the feel. Tell me, talk about that. Well, I know back, back in the day growing up, it was, it was, it was a lot of hospitality jobs. Especially with the princess, because the whole the Bahamas princess was like uh, Atlantis and and Freeport Grand Bahama. Okay. And then you had Holiday Inn, which is where my father worked for some thirty five years as a chef. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can remember that growing up. Um, you had Port Lacay Resort and Yard Club. You had Zanadu Beach Resort and Hotel. You had Tino Beach Resort and Hotel. So you call it like like six seven hotels. Yeah. Are they still open? Um, Tino Beach is still open. Um, Xanadu, shut down, Holiday Inn. That's like, Holiday Inn is like with the three hotels within mm-hmm. Alukai. I mean, um, so what, right what's now. the major hotel there now? The major, um, Pelican Bay. Okay. Yeah, Pelican Bay. That is located in Port Lakai as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now in Freeport, it's more like industrial. The shipyard, Bradford Marine, Freeport Container Port. There's a lot of industrial work. Um, what I think needs to happen, honestly, we need to have some either some serious investors or the government need to just do something with this port authority thing to tr- just to try to get the the place booming again. Because I mean do it's something like something like what? Because I mean that most Grand Bahamas it remember him say the same thing. Oh, they gotta do something with the port. But what exactly do you want them the government to do with the port? The port to, is a to, private entity. Yeah, to be honest, I mean I don't know if it could happen, but if they could take the Hawksville Creek Agreement, the whole thing off the board and just, hey, give Freeport back to the government. So you want Freeport to look like West End. That's what you're saying. No, not, I don't want it to look like West End. <laughs> so but if you need, sound. You sound need, like need. you want to move the port and want Freeport to return how West End look, where the government controls. We need more jobs. We need more jobs. Yeah, the, the economy is, we need more jobs. 
You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Freeport pretty. I like the streets are clean, doing a fantastic job with that, but where's the jobs? Mm -hmm. You know, people hurting. Mm -hmm. I can be honest with you. You're just keeping everything in one circle. Come on. So you believe the port has a responsibility for the, for, for the Freeport area and by extension the rest of Grand Bahama? Yes, because that's the agreement they made with the government some plus years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, but it is not happening. Mm. It is not happening. And you want the government to basically negotiate, re renegotiate this contract. Say, man, I, I wish they could just take it, yeah. Just take it on. Is it, that bad that you're willing to risk the whole of Grand Bahama, I mean, the whole of Freeport and say, man, we will to start off and stay, do, by, do bad by our own self? I'm telling you, because back, I mean, back in the day, things was things. I don't know what happened now. Why they take their foot off the gas, mm -hmm. you know? Freeport was booming back in the 80s, going into the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Freeport was booming. Mm -hmm. The airline industry, the hotel industry, the harbor. I mean, I remember it was, it was crazy. People talk about this magic. Magic city. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure what is magic. And I, see, I'm more earthy. I'm, I'm more uh, African in, in my concept. And when you speak of magic, the magic city, I think, oh, definitely you're doing Obia there. So clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, you all need a new Obia man to do some kind of magic because the magic gone. The magic gone. But I see again, a text just said that if you go to Fusion, you could get pancake, uh, pancake and fish. Fusion here? Yeah, fusion here. Oh, I will. I never been to fusion I mean, up here. I mean, I look like since I can get this party cake and fish from nobody <laughs> here, I may have to <laughs> drive down there and, and get a movie and ask for it. You know, but that's what the Texas say. You, you, you can get that, and I'm not sure of anyone at our fish. Well, I sure, I sure, um, um, some, 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 probably one or two vendors over by Awaki or yeah. Portiski may be doing it, but someone from Grand Bahama. But yeah. I know Freeport is the original. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's that's the original spot for that. So is Gully Wash a Freeport thing or that's a Bimini thing? Well, I know I know Freeport, I know with Bimini. So, so Gully Wash. So you all have Gully Wash in, in Freeport, yeah, Grandma. Yeah, yes yeah. we do. We get Gully Wash Bar yeah. in International Bazaar. Then we have the Gully Wash Bar at Smith Spring. Do you know what Gully Wash is? Let me make sure we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> yes, I do. What, what is Gully Wash? What's, what's your interpretation of Gully Gully Wash? Yeah. Uh Coconut water. Okay, let's make sure you be talking. Some gin there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so, so Grand Bahama has gully wash. Oh, yeah. And Bimini has gully wash. Yes. Right? You all call your own sky juice over that's, here. That, because that's the right name. Oh. It's a juice from the well, sky. We don't call it sky juice in Freeport. We go by gully wash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm aware that Grand Bahama has a Bimini abaco culture fused in Grand Bahama. So, it's, it's definitely unique, you know. And um, yeah. so, that's something that... Um, can be cherished and, and celebrate that you have a, a tri mm -hmm. tri state or tri island um, uh, culture. Yeah, because you know? we do have a lot of Bimanites back and forth from Grand Bahama mm -hmm. and Abacobi, Abaco Abaconians. Abaconians, yes. Abaconians, yes. Yeah, so I, I, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Um, but go ahead, finish thing. Uh, what, what all is needed for Grand Bahama? What, what do you think we need to push forward? Um, who do we need to lobby? Because um, I would, see, I'm old school in thinking that if Grand Bahama wants to succeed, it will have to be themselves who save it. There'll be the salvation. It won't be the government. It won't be the, the port, the authority in general. It would more likely be um, uh, local investors yeah. who come and say, okay, I'm going to do a collection of fish fries. I'm going to do a collection of, 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 of the pop-up shops and, and, and eateries like that. And that itself would draw the economy and build the economy itself. So I would assume that. But before I have you answer, I see I have a caller there. Producer, put that caller through. Go ahead, caller. Producer? Go ahead, caller. Thank you for holding. Hey, good morning. How are you doing, my brother? It's always good, man. Thanks for calling again. Let me have, um, let me have, have to work you on something that you want to tell me to make so much mistakes, man. Go ahead. To be, to be here in the island of New Orleans, going out, over water and gin. That's, some people just pop up themselves, but that's kind of just nonsense there. Oh, I talk about static. We are. See, we gotta collect these things, man. No, I know you're just you're misleading the baby people. So, who brought the, 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 the sky juice name again? Some people from the South Jamaican, Barbados, and the Asian company between the name. None of them. So, I stopped named coconut water and gin. Gin and, and coconut, coconut water. Or Kong Salad. That's the way you are saying in the island of New Providence. Uh, now, that's got us right now. I understand. It's, it's, I understand. You're misleading the, the people. I, I, and, 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 and with the people, 
It's always good to hear you, man. Um, and and I know for a fact that Mr. Christie loves this country. And I, I assume that he signed the Hawksburg Creek Agreement extension because at this at that point in time it was the best for Grand Bahama. I assume that uh, he expected, especially with the Chinese investors, that they would have done what they promised. They would have invested in in the airport and the hotel that they purchased and it just didn't pan out, which is unfortunate. But um, like you said, we have a New Day government. So we'll see what they have planned. But I want you to continue. What exactly uh, is needed in Grand Bahama? Okay, in a real... I know you say you need jobs. I say you know you need investors. And I, and I counter that, that uh, perhaps there needs to be investment by free partyans, Grand Bahamians in general, who will invest in local business, smaller business, and that will, uh, will draw attention and, and bring back people back home. Yeah, I, I really do think so. Um, because you have a lot of, a lot of Grand Bahamians who adventure out. Many of them have gone different, different countries, wherever. Just because of the economy and the way things looking in Freeport, Grand Bahama. But um, but Grand Bahama needs some more nightlife, day life. Just something to just just get the just get the place going and up and running. Things which you could do throughout the day, because basically there's nothing really to do. Mm-hmm. Like like how so much things you could do here in Nassau with your kids. You know, you got the bowling alley, all these other rest of stuff going on, you know. Like the bowling alley, we don't have that in Freeport. The mm-hmm. bowling alley been shut down, you know. So, yeah, it's just. And, and, and I see I have a text here said, Hubert Ingram resigned the Hawksburg Creek Agreement extension and not Perry Christie. You say, check your facts. So I, I had that on, put that on the record because I don't remember. <laughs> you know, but we go by that. So um, I want to ask you, is it parking or parky? Growing up in Freeport, they say parky. So what do you call it? <laughs> I call it parky. You call it parky. So you just go parky to people up. And y'all call it parking. See, but see, when you put it in a sentence, parky. yeah, try to put parky in a sentence. Go ahead. You put Porky in a sentence. Go ahead. I give I give you the benefit of the doubt. Because I can put Porky. I was playing Porky and I park him with the ball. I play in Porky today. And you Porky him with the ball? See, how, you know how that sounds? I Porky him with the ball? So what do you do, so, the, what do, you do with the ball? Do you Porky him? I hit him with the ball. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different wording altogether. Okay. I, I just want to know. You know, it's, Says Porky. Yeah, I see they have a lot of debate on that on Facebook and social media back and forth. Yeah. 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 I think we in Nassau are sensible. We know that it's Porkin and not necessarily Porky. But, but I understand you're up north. You're, you're influence different. And, and do you put mayonnaise in your Kong salad? Kong salad? No, I don't no? do that. No. no. So that's an Abaco thing? Uh, they say it's a free poor thing, but, you know, I see it happen a lot at home. Oh, they just do that in, in Grand Bahama too? Yeah. For the mayonnaise? Yeah, the mayonnaise and all that. But I don't, I don't I, like I say, I don't put mayonnaise in my salad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I never tried it, and you know. So how do you like your skunk salad? Um, I'm more like a Scotch guy. Oh, Scotch like, guy. Yeah, Scotch okay. Scotch conk. Mm. Okay, yeah, okay, Scotch conk. And um, where we work, I see that there's a, there are a number of Grand Bahamians um, emigrating from Grand Bahama to New Providence. Now, how has that impacted the island? Why are they moving out of Grand Bahama? Which is an obvious thing, right? But how is that impacting in terms of the environment, the, 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 the feel? Because, you know, when you, you grew up a certain way, right. so this is how I live. And now that the people who you grew up with are living in, in New Providence or living in Abaco or living in Bimini, how is that left leaving uh, uh, Grand Bahama? Um, I, you know, like seeing them, seeing them here. But I saw even a couple of my classmates and all. 
a few of them. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's feeling kind of strange sometimes, you know, because you, like I say, you transitioning and all that, and you, know, you got to get yourself to use the way you're going, and you got to meet new people, new friends, um, new coworkers, and you got to adjust yourself, you know. So, I mean, to me, with the transitioning, how I feel about it, I feel, I feel great about it, you know. I've been coming to Nassau for years as a young child, so I have no problem coming here. You know, free poor people don't like Nassau. If they come here, they want to leave the same day. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Okay, um, uh, text saying that, uh, good morning, why did the government cancel the hotel deal in Grand Bahama? That is in the paper this morning. Grand Bahama people should question that. And I, I didn't glimpse that inside the paper, so um, I didn't saw I, that. Uh, so I, I can't comment. Wow. Um, if it is true, uh, people someone can call and, and give comment for you on that. I'm not familiar with it. And said, "Porky is a noun. Porking is the verb. It's simple English. So you pork. You have you are playing porky, but you no. That can't be. You can't pork in person. You don't pork in person. <laughs> You know, you park someone, you get, you get parked, you know. Um, Grand Bahamian people just special in terms of um, the way they speak. Pronun yeah, yeah, pronunciation. Yeah, so they're, they're just different, yeah. you know. Okay, so um, I, I, I also wanted to speak on you personally uh, in terms of what do you think of independence? How do you see the Bahamas as, as an independent country. What does independence, you, we being a sovereign nation, mean to you? Um, first of all, I'm proud to be a Bahamian. And what does that mean? It means a lot. Yeah, and what does it mean? <laughs> Our culture alone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you see um, visitors come here from all around the world and enjoy these things that we have right here. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so sad to see that we as Bahamians, we don't even enjoy these things. Sometimes you'll see um, the visitors posting stuff on the timeline. And you, I, I'll look at the comments and people be like, where's this? Where is that? Right here in your own, your own land. And you wouldn't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know? And it is, it's a blessing. Okay. It's a blessing. But I want you to expound on it. Um, you say you appreciate the culture. What else about the Bahamas do you enjoy? Do you are you proud of? Which you will salute and say, "Well, we are the best country in the world because of." I feel. I feel like we have some great leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel we have some awesome leaders in this country. Um, you know, if we could just get on the same page sometime and stop, you know, with this politics thing. Because to be honest with you, I admire both leaders from each party. Mm -hmm. You know, that I don't care who it is. Once you're doing a great job, that's what it's all about. How is politics in Grand Bahama? Ah, politics in Grand Bahama. Well, you, they, they say um, Grand Bahama is a F and M country, you mm -hmm. know, so. Well, well, you have two out of the three, out of the five now. You know, you have West End and then you have um, Ginger, Moxie, I'm not sure. Pine which, Ridge, which, yeah. Pine Ridge. That's where you is. Yeah, Pine yeah. Ridge. Okay. Yeah. But I see I have another caller right now. I want to ask you a question, so let me see what the caller will have to say. Go ahead, caller. Thank you for holding. Caller, can you hear me? The caller still there? They gone? Oh, the caller hung up. Sorry about that caller. And and um, but yes, I want to hear about politics in in Grand Bahama, right? Um, once upon a time, uh, the last administration had like five. I think it's five. Was it five? Yeah, five. There's five. Five seats. Right. And um, people. Grand Bahamian store, like this, are, are, this they, are they rich? This, this is now. Definitely things must change. Did things change? No, it didn't. Um, basically, with them five MPs, like I say, one was really fighting a lot. Which that, was one the, was that? that was the former MP for Byron Rich. Uh, he, um, he showed that he was for the people. Mm -hmm. Michael Pine. Michael Pine. Yeah. Michael Pine. And then you all vote him out. After he showed the heat for the people. But I mean, typical. They, they vote him. <laughs> it's typical. <laughs> typical. But, but yeah. I, I, I know Miss Moxie's there now, and, and she's the minister of Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama, yes. And then she's doing her best. I see she has this youth program yes. that she has initiated, initiated. So we just need to now is watch to see how, how much it will impact, if it does impact, right? Yes. But I know that just like New Providence, right, Grand Bahama is a political animal. 
there's a political see, uh, city where people are influenced by their political power, uh, parties, right? So uh, it, it's hard to to critique uh, a, a, a MP as doing a, a good job or Yerman's job when people have joined this eye, you know, either it's yellow or, or it's red. red, right? But what about local government? How effective is that? Or oh, local government, um, I think local government does a very good job. Um, I see one of my um, former friends from Pine Ridge. He is one of the local government's representatives for Pine Ridge, Edwin Strong. Mm -hmm. um, I see they're doing a lot of work there on the ground in Freeport, in the communities as well, with mm -hmm. Jane Moxie. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think, it's, I think the, the local government is playing a great role. Mm -hmm. And they, they inf they're able to influence the local MPs there to say, well, this is what we need. This is the businesses we want to do. This is the initiatives that we're doing. The local government. Yeah, I I, I notice um with them they more they more be up with the MPs and having the discussions and meetings and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I know we have seven minutes uh to, more to go. Um, if you can recommend four things, four things to your either MP in in, in Pine Ridge or to the government in general in regards to Grand Bahama, right? What would those four things be? Like, what to say, man, we need this, um, or don't do this? We, I, I could say we need a hospital. You need, and, and the, 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 this administration promised a new hospital, yes, so you yes, need sir. a new hospital. We really need a hospital, okay. I can be honest with that. Grand Bahama needs it, like, I mean, like, very, they need it. Um, airport. And we know the government promised a new airport also. Yes, so. we, we need an airport. And um, I must say, especially the people. Don't forget the people. Please don't forget the people who put you there. Don't mm -hmm. forget the people. That's the, most, that's the most important thing. And I think that's where some of these um, MPs, you know, when they get up there, they forget. You know, you can't forget the people. Because this is what, this what it's all about. The people and the economy. Mm -hmm. The economy really needs to, you, you know, need to get shot now. Something um, needs to happen. But the, I went home in March. That's the last time I was home in March. Um, and I went downtown. I see some things starting now. You see movement? Yeah, I see a lot of movement going you on. You see tourists um, walking? With the old, no, I haven't seen no tourists no, walking. No tourist walking. <laughs> but I could tell you I'm downtown by the old Winn-Dixie food store. Mm -hmm. um, that should be opening up the end of this month mm -hmm. as Solomon brothers nice yeah solomon's mm -hmm. so you have a lot of vacant stores in the downtown area plenty of vacant stores mm -hmm. and so everything is starting to you know get back to a little normalcy now probably in another couple of months yeah yeah downtown should be back to downtown mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i'll write down one more question for you but you just mentioned the hospital and uh, you mentioned the airport and um just trying to read my notes now. Oh, I mentioned that we were talking about why the people moving. Why are the people moving out of Grand Bahama? No jobs. Just no jobs. No jobs. And, okay. No jobs. They find better opportunities elsewhere, and they relocating. Will they come back home if things get better? You think? I think they would. You would go back home. If I would go back. Yeah. All depends. All depends. If, if you get offered one good job, you can't refuse. But at this present time, you're a Nassau boy now. Yes, I am. A Nassau boy. I'm a Nassau boy now. I understand. Yeah. I understand. You know? Um, but I, I appreciate you coming um, and sharing your views about Grand Bahama. I, I know I talk about Grand Bahama fleetingly. You know, I, I remember I had a running joke that Grand Bahama finished, right? And to hear you speak and say that things are changing, even though it may be slow. Mm -hmm. Right to hear that there are people still there working hard, uh, toiling the soil, uh, waiting for the government and investors to come in, but they are prepared to work. To hear that Grand Bahamians are willing to return home if things get better, you know, it gives me hope. It gives me hope. Yes. To, to hear that you have Grand Bahamians have ideas on what the the, the island needs, what what the island needs to do. Right, and that they're willing to share those ideas and partner with the government is it, it, something that warms my heart, that warms my my spirit. You know, because I, I was I'm concerned about the island. I'm concerned about the psyche, and that was the question I wanted you know to mention. Um, 
I know what depression is mm -hmm. and, and what constant bad luck does to people. You know, you, you tend to give that given up spirit. And to know that Grand Bahama has been embattled for some, uh, like over a decade now. Yeah, we you know. So I can only wonder if the people in Grand Bahama has given up. So man, they can help us. It is what it is. This is our new normal. But to hear you speak, it, it sounds as if, no, you're waiting for change. You're willing to work for change, right? Yeah. No, so, uh, so that I'm happy to hear that, you know, that Grand Bahama isn't um, laying down and play dead. No. That you all are prepared to work. Resilient. Resilient. Eh? Even though you all say it's porky and, and, <laughs> and not porking, right? So I, tr I thoroughly enjoy that. And I hope to invite you back to me, just maybe so we could talk some Nassau things. And, sure, and, sure, sure. And um, get you as, as a regular on 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 the show and 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 then speak things right. I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. But um, tomorrow, if my guest doesn't show up again, um, we will have an open line uh, day tomorrow where we could talk some politics. I have some interesting things to talk about. I see there was some movement by the Minister of National Security. There was some movement by that COI uh, leadership, and in terms of they challenging the government again to come, there is some movement. In, in, in reference to NIB and then some of the debate. Um, I'm going to talk about all of that tomorrow. Um, this is C.A. Nuri. This is Guardian Radio on AM. And I enjoyed this conversation today with Shivago Bean, B-E-E-N. Um, the name comes from um, Turks and Caicos, you know, uh, by way of Bermuda. And it's interesting to know that there's a vibrant community of Turks and Caicos in you. I think you clear? Turks and Caicos. Oh, Turks and Caicos people, Islanders, Islanders, uh, is still in Grand Bahama, and they are smiling and living strong. This is Guardian Radio Nam, CA Nuri. Have a good day.